Good morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. Uh, today we're making a start on the can filler. Got some plans here, look. And uh, we've also got some steel and everything else just off shot. So the steel all arrived yesterday and uh, I've set about cutting into it. Uh, at the moment I'm just popping the slots into some of the profiles to enable us to set the can filling arms at different positions uh, but unfortunately the uh, cutting discs that I'm using because obviously I don't have a CNC r machine or anything or a, a milling machine and we're using these Norton multi discs and uh, cutting stainless is really at the bottom end of their capabilities so uh, I've got Froggy with me this morning and he's got some proper discs at home for cutting stainless steel. It saved me having to order online at Screwfix or Tool Station and go in which is a bit of a pain at the moment. He's gone to pick some of those up for us. So we'll be back shortly. But yeah, what I've been doing is cutting these slots for the can fill uh, rail and what we're going to be doing is welding these up and uh, well basically piecing all the components together so I'll try and pick up the camera incrementally as we go along so you can kind of follow along a little bit uh, we've got all the pieces cut here uh, and there is a cutting list and a sketch up file on the can filler github or github um, page just look for clune open beer filler and you'll find it and here's all the components so I'm just about to start to tack up and weld the very first piece of the puzzle. All right, I hope I've got this in shot, folks. So we're sat here at the TIG welder, which is just below me. It's an NTX 260 for anyone who's interested. And what we're gonna do is just I've tacked this up already. We're just going to flow these corners into each other, just using the existing parent metal, no filler required, and that way the weld won't sit proud of the surface so we can put other components on uh, as and when we need them. So I'm in a bit of an awkward position for this, but I'm going to see if I can do it anyway and kind of get some of it on the camera. So I'm kind of welding left-handed here not literally but it feels that way there we are so that's welded that little edge up together there you can see hopefully it's pretty flush I'm just going to do the same on the side here I'm just going to run this weld up little different welding uphill tend to have to go a little bit faster there we go and that looks pretty neat to me there doesn't seem to be any um, coking or any of the uh, alloys coming out of the metal so we'll just flip it over just do the same here And again, I'm trying not to leave any gaps anywhere because that will obviously be somewhere for bugs to grow in the future, which is not something that we'd like to see. There we go. So I think we've got two more welds to do on this side and that should be enough to hold it together for what, for the purpose of filling guns at least. And also, if you don't know, the reason I pause after the weld's completed like that is to allow some more of the argon gas, the shielding gas, to flow over the weld until it cools enough that it doesn't pick up oxygen out of the air. And that prevents 
discolouring of the weld and potential contamination of the steel. So here this is what you call post flow and that just keeps it looking a little bit neater. So if I zoom up into the uh, focus point of the camera there, hopefully she will be able to pick this up. There we go. So that's the finished article welded both sides and as I said we've got that on all all four corners. Not a bad little weld if I don't say so myself. Hello. <laughs> Thought I'd better introduce him. You've not seen him on the vlog for a while. You've not seen me on the vlog for a while. Anyway, after much um, fiddling around and welding and cutting and all sorts, uh, with Chris's help, we have managed to put together what is, let me turn this beeper off, what is a prototype cam machine. So I'll run through it with you in order for you to keep up with the build because I know this morning it was just steel. Uh, so what we've done is taken all those cut pieces from our plan and we basically just tacked them all together uh, as square as we possibly could which isn't very <laughs> and uh, drilled a few slots in cut them out with the angle grinder uh, put some holes in here as well for the rams and then we've basically just hooked it back up to the exact same setup that I had on my kitchen table that I showed you a few videos back and we've brought everything in including a substitute for a solenoid valve because during testing we couldn't hear it going on so we put a couple of beepers in this one is indicating the CO2 purge and this one is indicating when the uh, fill solenoids would be open so I can kind of just run you through the process in fact let me set the camera up on a good angle and you might be able to see everything in one hit, I think uh, you'll be impressed because we are. Yeah, definitely. So it works. Oh, we also had beer over here as well. We've got some beer in this little cup, uh, so I can put my three sensor probes, which after taking advice of somebody on the comment section, said it would be better if you probe uh, your your fill tubes were grounded and your probe was 5 volts then you don't have any uh, metals or ions dissolving into the beer even though it would only be in there briefly so let's start the cycle uh, this is actually as you come to the machine this is the machine off so when you come in you'd uh, plug the whole thing in and hook it up to the Sorry. You'd hook it up to the compressor and she'd be, uh, well, she'd be charged just like this. So now this is in its set state ready to function. So I don't know if I could, you can see that actually down the bottom. We've got the gas ram just down there. So you'll, you'll want to pay mind to that as well. It's just here. So when we actuate the start of the process, the gas ram pushes the cans and then the fill rail descends and you can hear the initial beep was a CO2 purge which will be longer but now this beeping indicates that the beer in the cans which would be on a couple of rails that poke out here would be filling. They stick out like so. And when we, uh, this is the sensor probe here, when it detects beer, like that, it lifts back out and we're set to the start of the phase again. So we can pretty much just cycle through this as many times as we want. And we've spent a long time setting this up because there was a little bit of binding involved in the framework. But the code is working seamlessly, that's not skip to beat and everything else now we've dialed it in 
seems to be doing the job. So I think where we went wrong earlier on was we were trying to uh, adjust too many settings at once and we ended up getting out of sync. So now we've got the rams working in parallel, if we want to change the speed of anything then we just need to wind out the exhaust valves for both of the cylinders at the same time. So yeah. you'll be able to see that by winding this out the, the fill rail will ascend a lot quicker or vice versa if I put that back to where it was and I wind the other one out it will descend a lot quicker or it should there we go and you can see it's starting to bind a little bit there twist this. and then we'll send it back up but yeah it's all about just controlling the air pressure and airspeed and uh, well I think that's a job well done. That's spot on. I might just speed that up a little bit on the descent. Maybe a bit too quick. Yeah. That's fine, that one. And there we have it. Hey presto. So I'll pull these out. We don't need the indicators on anymore. I love it. I can't stop pushing the button. <laughs> it's giving a sweet shot. Can push, can push retracts, fill rail down, CO2 shot, then it's uh, beer fill, indicator probe, Cans back up and then cycle starts again. Put three cans in. Where she goes. Loving it. Jobs of fish. It's bloody brilliant! <laughs> <laughs> so, all we need to do now is uh, we've got some more steel to put along the bottom, which is these two big pieces. So, this I'll put it underneath, mate. This will be the. Uh, This is the track for the cans to sit on and this is adjustable uh, in this direction so you can go from really small skinny little if you wanted uh, tonic bottles to that should in theory hold a mini keg so you can fill mini kegs on here as well. Does it look wide enough? It doesn't but I bet you it is. Oh, I don't know. We'll forget you could. It's 170. I thought they were. They wanted to be a bit bigger actually than that. But we'll see. We'll sort it. It's not going to have any kegs on it from day one. If I need to extend this, it's just a case of welding another bit of metal on end, or even onto here. So these have got little slots yeah, on them. Yeah, that might be a better idea. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, it looks like. Um, well, that's a big hurdle on moving towards building a fully functioning automatic can filling machine for uh, can conditioned. We don't know how this would work with pressurised carbonated beer. Mm. I imagine there'd be a lot more fiddling. So the next job is going to be uh, slotting some slots onto here so these can fill rails can move in all directions and then drop in a fill tube through the centre and then we'll sort of have to start putting pneumatics and liquid lines and uh, electrics on there. I need a control panel for maybe around the back or on the end here. Maybe just annexed off the end so we can push the... Yeah. I don't know. Off. Because you're filling from this end on, yeah. you see. You put your cans on, start your button, take your cans, cans off, off. Seam. seam, come back round, three yeah. more cans on, Push the Start button. Start it. Logical sequence, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a loop. So there we go, folks. Hope you enjoyed that little update as much as we enjoyed building it. It's been good fun. It has been good fun. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Too right. Cheers. Laters.